Hello, here are some tips to make a perfect dental cast. A good dental cast ensures that you do not lose any details captured during impression procedures and it also makes the cast durable and fracture resistant during subsequent clinical and laboratory procedures. Here we can see some poorly made cast with porosity, loss of anatomic details, insufficient base thickness, land of good land area often leading to fracture of the cast. You can pour impressions after beading and boxing, which I do highly recommend, especially for beginners, or you can use the two pour technique. The bowl and spatula used for mixing should be absolutely clean and free of any remnant plaster. Any remnants of previously set plaster can act as nuclear crystallization and affect working and setting time. Weigh the powder and liquid according to the water powder ratio, or you can proceed as follows. Always sift powder into the water and allow it to sink to the bottom. Never drop it down in huge lumps as this can entrap a lot of air bubbles. Keep sifting powder into the water until the added powder no longer sinks into it and starts staying afloat. This ensures that the water is saturated with the powder which in turn guarantees a cast with good physical properties. Spatulation can be done by hand or by using a mechanical spatulator. If your proportions were guessworked initially, you may get a thin mix and may end up adding more powder in between spatulation. This essentially produces two mixes of plaster setting at different times which results in a weakened product with poor physical properties. Also avoid over spatulation. Over spatulation causes the formed gypsum crystals to be broken. These broken crystals act as additional nuclear crystallization affecting working and setting time. Air bubbles incorporated during the mixing can be removed by tapping on the workbench or by using a mechanical vibrator. A high frequency low amplitude vibration is desirable. Avoid over agitation as this can whip more air bubbles into the mix. Add material into the impression, adjust the distal corner, keep adding more material into the same point and allow the weight of the material to flow over to the other regions. Do not add material randomly all over the impression as this can result in lot of voids. Use of a mechanical vibrator allows us to do the same procedure precisely resulting in a more denser cast. The poured impression should be allowed to set completely. In the two pour technique, the first layer is poured as previously mentioned. 3 to 4 retentive tags are placed over the impression. Wait for initial set of this layer. A thicker mix of stone is made and poured over the workbench or a tile to mimic base of the cast. The impression tray with the first pour is inverted over this base. Borders are then perfected using a plaster knife. To remove the cast, I am placing it in a warm water bath. Allow the material to soften and carefully separate it by prying it at the edges. Paying attention to these tiny details ensures that you get a dense and strong dental cast which is a prerequisite for all upcoming clinical and laboratory procedures. We shall see more about parts of a cast and the recommended dimensions in the next video. So no more weak cast with porosities or fracture. Signing off for today. Thank you.